This is me winning my very first competition in cosmetology school, third place. I was so excited you would have actually thought I won first place. It was so hard for me to push myself, but I found the confidence to actually enter the competition, and I'm so glad I did. So as you can see, building your self-confidence, regardless of where you are in your career, can help you minimize self-doubt and build your career further, faster. So if you are a newbie watching this video, take a look at this photo where I had to push past my comfort zone and increase my confidence level because I wanted to become an expert hair cutter, the hair cutter that I am today. And in order to do that, I had to build my self-confidence up and take as many haircuts as I could. So let's take a look inside our virtual salon experience where I share with you my perspective on how you can build your confidence level as a salon professional and also minimize your struggle with self-doubt. So the very first tip that I have from my perspective on how you can get more confidence as a salon professional is to know your craft. Now, I didn't say you need to know everything about your craft, but you definitely need to take a dive deeper in whatever your niche might be. Say for instance, you specialize in natural hair or cutting or color. You need to make sure that at that particular time, you know the basics of cutting, the basics of color because a great foundation in whatever your niche, whatever you specialize in, or whatever you're an expert in, is really gonna take you further, faster as well. So again, don't try to know everything about your craft, but know the basics. And if you're not already, become a niche salon professional. And by that I mean, become an expert at something. Make sure you know how to add texture into a bob. Make sure that you know how to create longer layers in haircuts. Make sure you know how to taper that haircut. If you have a shortcut, make sure that client does not have to go to a barber because you can't use the clippers. So you need to make sure that you know your crap and make sure that you focus on progress and not perfection. So the next tip that I wanna share with you is something special. And that particular tip is number two, is to be yourself. This is so huge in today's high-tech world because we're watching people on social media, we're watching colleagues that might be working directly next to us. And I know when I first got into the industry, I worked beside people that did some amazing cuts, they did some amazing styles. But what I would do is watch them because I learned so much. So don't get into not watching someone because you wanna be yourself. You wanna watch them so that you can take those little tips and those little tricks and just add it to your expert skill and knowledge. So never feel like you shouldn't watch someone else work and never feel like someone else shouldn't watch you. You're never gonna come up with the exact same look that you come up with based on a cut, a color, a natural hairstyle. It's never gonna happen. So when you're in this industry, regardless of how many years you've been in the industry, make sure that you be yourself. If you're watching someone on social media and you just love their work, just pay attention to them, stalk them, and just work on recreating the look in your own way without having to think that you need to have your looks look exactly like theirs. You might add a little twist to the bang area or the fringe area. Or you might add an extra pop of color in an area that they didn't. And the most important aspect of being yourself, because we all do this, we compare ourselves to others. You want to make sure that you don't compare your year three in the industry to someone else's year 10 in the industry. Because I'm going to be honest, sometimes you see someone's work that's five years into the industry or 15. And you might not be able to tell that that particular haircut on someone five years in the industry, it might look better than someone that's 10 years into the industry because they're young into the business, they're studying more, they're focusing on their craft, they know a lot of the newer and, and, and hottest techniques and cutting and color. So never compare your year three to someone else's year 10. So yes, here we are at my tip and perspective number three on building your confidence in 
the salon as a hairstylist. And that is do your research. This may be a little bit different than what you've heard in the industry. We all talk about consultations. Now we learn about consultations in cosmetology school and we know how to do thorough consultations. But what I always feel is when we're doing consultations, we need to make sure that we take a little deeper dive into the client's perspective. And by that I mean, make sure that you know a little bit more about the client. Make sure you know her lifestyle. Make sure you know her style. Like when she walks into the salon, don't just focus on her hair. Focus on her look, what she has on. If you have a client who always comes in with jeans and gym shoes, then you know they're a little bit more conservative. If you have that diva that comes in with stilettos and her designer bag, then you know that she wants to be a little bit more trendier than someone that comes in with the jeans and the gym shoes. But in this step, you wanna do your research and especially with what's going on today where we're doing one client at a time. So make sure that you connect with your clients before salon visits. Communicating to clients first is a great for these reasons. You get to learn if a client is a great fit for you and your brand. You can learn exactly what her desires are and how best to service her needs. You can feel more comfortable saying no if you can't. You can also feel confident in saying yes that you can help her with the solution to her hair goals. Remember, focus on progress, not perfection. And another thing in doing your research, the more you can help them build their self-confidence, the more you help you build your self-confidence. So number four, find accountability partners. If you are in a commission salon structure, a salon suite structure, or a booth rental situation, you wanna make sure that you connect, collab, and create with like-minded hairstylists. Find people that you can relate to and resonate with. Become accountability partners in your salon or not, maybe even on social media. This allows you to stretch your comfort zone and stretch your level of expertise by working with other people that are similar and like-minded. People that are positive, people that will help you grow, and people that, are, that take pride in knowing that you succeed as well. Connecting with other like-minded professionals also allows you to grow your business because sometimes people that you connect with and become accountability partners with may not be experts at the same niche as you are. You might find someone that's really a great accountability buddy that does all natural hair and you specialize in cutting or you specialize in coloring and she can refer her clients to you and vice versa as well. Are you getting value out of these tips and strategies so that you can grow your confidence in the salon industry? Let me know down in the comment section below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Let's move on to the very next tip, which is seek out a mentor. So when I first plunged myself into the, into the salon industry, I was afraid, even though I felt very confident at what I love to do, which is hair cutting, I was still looking at other people, watching this person over there. And so I gravitated to someone and, and just took them on as my own mentor. You can take someone on as your mentor, even in just by watching them on social media. And the way you do that is just stalk them. Just watch everything that they do, make a comment on everything that they post, as long as it's from the heart and you're being transparent and it's not something you like it, but you really don't like it. Don't say you like it, you're not gonna like everything, but take on someone as your mentor, regardless if they are right in your city or if there's someone on social media and someone online that you just love what they do. So make sure that you take on a mentor and you just stalk them until you learn everything that you can for them and you learn, you duplicate, you try it out and you add it to your expertise and knowledge. Another great reason as to why you should seek out a mentor is because they will help you in areas that you really don't know you need help. Because when you don't know you don't know, you don't know what to ask and you don't know that you actually need the help. And if you're new to the industry, consider starting out in the industry as a salon assistant. 
And if you're not new to the industry, consider working a few days in the salon and actually finding someone that you love their work that are that is in your city. Consider assisting them for free. And why I say for free is because you're not there to get paid. You're there to learn. You're there to build your confidence. And you're also there to build your expertise and knowledge in the field that you're interested in. So this tip, look the part. It's so exciting for me because I love fashion. I love beauty. I love hair. I love everything about the total look. You want to embody the career of a hairstylist by creating your own personal style and creativity. Looking the part even on your days off, you never know who you will run into. I'm not saying create an entire look of makeup every single day. Every individual in the beauty industry needs to look like you're in the beauty industry. So looking the part can really help you build your business, it can help you build your brand, and it can definitely help you build your confidence. When someone sees you out in the street, they should be able to say, I know what you do for a living. Maybe not you do hair for a living, but you are creative. You are someone that's in the fashion industry or has a or your industry has a relation to the fashion industry. So regardless of what area in the industry you're in, but especially hairstylists, you need to definitely make sure that you are looking the part. You wanna make sure that you have that look, that look that portrays beauty, that look that portrays fashion, that look that portrays a creative, that look that portrays someone that's professional, that's on their business, and track the clients that you wanna draw into your business and your brand. I am clearly not stating that you should be the most decked out and fabulous every day, but whenever you step out into the street, you are representing your brand. You are representing your business. So really, it's up to you how you wanna represent your business and your brand. If you wanna step out and not look so fabulous, then that's how you're representing your brand. But if you wanna do the opposite, then make sure that you're keeping that in mind. Make sure that you are looking the part because that will definitely help boost your confidence every single day and also create a professional environment and atmosphere when you're in the salon. Next tip is focus on the positive. And that is not the easiest thing to do in 2020, right? focusing on the positive, but you gotta focus on the positive as much as possible. I know for me, I get, you know, into this position where I'm just like, you know, with everything going on in society, I have my days, trust me. I'm gonna be transparent. I definitely have my days, but what I try to focus on the most is focus on what you want and not what you don't want. So focusing on the positive, if you're focusing on the positive, you're definitely focusing on what you want. And when I say what you want, I mean your dreams, your goals for the industry. And when you're focusing on the positive, it helps you be more confident in getting up, going into the salon every day because you're carrying that same vibe when you're working with your clients. Now, we all can have clients that are, you know, they can be Debbie Downers and negative Nancys, right? But you want to kind of be able to shift the conversation, especially with everything that's going on in today's world in this year of 2020. So make sure that you're thinking of what you want and not what you don't want by focusing on the positive. That will definitely help increase your confidence and have you minimize your struggle with self-doubt. Celebrate your small wins. You got to celebrate your small wins. Don't just celebrate when you open a new salon. Don't just celebrate when you open your and launch your salon suite. Celebrate an effective color that you were able to produce for a client. Some corrective color that you were able to correct on a client. Those are the kind of little small wins that you need to celebrate and focus on. Focus on celebrating your small wins because this will help you increase and grow your confidence level one client at a time. Don't wait until a client sends you three, five, and six clients. Celebrate when she sends you one client. Celebrate when someone reached out, reaches out to you on social media because you posted a video of your haircut. Celebrate when someone sees you out and about and you look fabulous, you're looking the part. Celebrate when they compliment you 
and you don't have to get the big head, but you're celebrating those small wins because those small wins lead up to the larger wins when you open your own salon and when you become an educator for a company. So make sure that to boost your confidence and grow your confidence, celebrate your small wins. The next tip is to increase your business knowledge. Increasing your business knowledge makes you do these few things. You know how you were sitting at home during the quarantine in 2020 and you never had a chance to work on your business because guess what? You were always working in your business. So make sure in order to increase your confidence in the industry, make sure that you increase your business knowledge. So that if that means studying marketing, if that means studying any thing outside of actually the practical application of doing hair, color, cutting, natural hair, sew-ins, whatever the case may be, you need to make sure that you are studying and implementing your business knowledge so that you can grow your life, your business, and your brand in the industry. Very last tip I have for you is to make sure that you study mindset and personal development. Read, 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 and keep your head in the game. Turn off the radio in your car sometimes and take the time to listen to audiobooks and podcasts. Make sure that you're keeping your head in the game, taking your mindset to the next level. We already talked about being positive and focusing on the positive. And the only way to do that is to keep studying mindset. Mindset is an everyday process. When you're studying your mindset, and personal development, you wanna make sure that you're focusing on the things that you have written down that you really desired. If that is to open up a new salon or to start your own salon suite, make sure that you're focusing on that when you're studying and increasing your mindset and improving your mindset and personal development. These tips definitely help me in building my business and my brand in the hair industry and helping me minimize the self-doubt that I was feeling early on in the industry. So again, let me know which tips resonated with you the most. And if there are any other tips that you have that you wanna share, make sure that you share them in the comments section below. And until the next video, peace.